Now what I'm going to turn to is the story of where new bugs come from. Where do new pathogens come from? And the story I'm going to tell you is one of E. coli 0157. It's a new and pervasive pathogen. It's a food contaminant that is now the leading cause of kidney failure in children. Now the first time I told this story was in a very unusual scenario. Uh, it was during Bill Clinton's administration and he became very worried about genetic engineering. In other words, what we can do in the lab now in building new groups of genes and perhaps altering a pathogen or altering some other normal process. And he was worried. He wanted to know how worried we should be about malevolent forces actually creating new pathogens. And, you know, he wanted to understand what was happening. And uh, I was part of a group of six people who were invited to speak with President Clinton and his whole cabinet. And the story I told them really was that genetic engineering, yes, we can do in the lab, but the bugs and the various kinds of critters out there in the natural world are much better genetic engineers than we are. And the example is E. coli 0157. Now, this is a picture of a virus, and I'm going to show you and tell you how this figured in to the genetic engineering that was carried out by E. coli 157. So where did it come from? E. coli 0157 was first isolated from a 50-year-old woman in California uh, who came down with severe gastric distress and bloody diarrhea. Uh, she survived, but she was quite ill. Then in 1980, 14 children were admitted to a Toronto hospital with the same symptoms. Of these, two children died, uh, and the rest were left with severe kidney damage. Again, the bug, the bacterium, isolated from one of these kids was the same as that found in that 50-year-old woman. And upon analysis, the very surprising development was that this E. coli cell, which is a bug that grows in all of our gastric uh, system and is quite harmless, had picked up a gene, a particular gene, from another bug, a pathogen called Shigella, that coded for a toxin. So now we had taken an E. coli cell and put in a gene that made it a pathogen. That is genetic engineering. In 1981, in White City, California, 12 people eating in a lo local hamburger place became ill with the same symptoms. 1982, in Michigan, again a local hamburger place, uh, E. coli 0157, as it was then named, uh, was found in its meat patties. 1993, jack-in-the-box restaurants in the Northwest. Uh, hundreds became ill, four kids died. And this continues on and on. It was found in 1996 in contaminated apple juice and lettuce. And that turned out because the E. coli cell picked up not only a gene for the toxin, but a gene that makes it resistant to acid. So it could grow in an acid environment, which normal E. coli does not. Uh, 1997, uh, there was again a huge recall of contaminated hamburger meat. And in 2007, just a couple of months ago, contaminated spinach was found. And that came from the runoff from livestock, which were not too far away. So it turns out that now uh, there are 25 to 30 outbreaks per year in the United States alone of E. coli 0157 contamination, and 5% of our dairy cows carry this pathogen. So how did this happen? What, how do we think that this occurred? So what I'm showing you here is a bacterial virus. Remember I told you that a virus has a protein head, and that's shown here. That's the head. This is its tail, and there's DNA in this head. And this over here uh, shows you what the virus looks like. This over here shows you a diagram of this virus. It looks like a moon lander, doesn't it? And what this moon lander does is it lands on a bacterial cell 
and it injects the DNA, the genetic material, right into the bacterial cell that it hits. And this is how we believe this happened. Okay? So in this diagram, I show you a Shigella bacterial cell. The blue circle is, indicates the chromosome, the single chromosome. And the little moon lander up there uh, indicates the virus. So the virus injects its DNA, and that's that little circle in the center of the head, into the cell. Once that DNA gets into the cell, it codes for things that chop up that blue chromosome. You chop up that blue chromosome in the little piece that contains that Shigella gene, then gets put into the head of a new virus. And so this new bacterial virus contains its own DNA and a little bit of that Shigella DNA, and that little bit contains the gene that causes a toxin. Now what happens is that that same virus hits an E. coli cell. And we believe this happened during an epidemic uh, of dysentery in uh, Central America when both E. coli and Shigella were mixed. And this virus injected its DNA into the harmless E. coli. And this piece of DNA got incorporated into the DNA of this E. coli, creating E. coli 0157. That, folks, is genetic engineering. That happens naturally.